Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashima Mashiaki Hawashai. That is the true name of the Heavenly Father, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahushai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. In the Paleo Hebrew, it's Brother Washanya with the church at WFI Little Rock, right here with another video, man. And as you can see by the title, we're going to be talking about mediocrity versus mastery. All right? Mediocrity versus mastery. What does it mean to be mediocre? I mean, it, it means average, plain, ordinary, you know, middle of the pack, nothing special versus the mastery, right? And I already got it pulled up, man. We're going to kind of get into, you know, the, the etymology of what mastery means. All right, all right. So mastery means, you know, state or condition of being a master, control, dominance, also superiority, ascendancy, the upper hand, victory in war or a contest, man. So if you want to strive for the mastery, then you are striving to be a master, man. And who do you want to be the master of, man? These nations, these heathen, right? You so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Indians that have been trodden down, oppressed, and kept on the foot for half a millennium, man. You should be striving to want to be masters over those who did that to you, man. It says control, dominance, also superiority, ascendancy, man. Meaning you want to ascend to that higher level, man. You want to ascend to that spiritual, that glorified body that's promised to those that overcome and, do, and, that, and that endure to the end, man. Because right now we're in these corruptible bodies that are breaking down, right? That are subject to the flesh, subject to sin, subject to vanity and vexation, right? You should want to ascend to that next level, right? And there's no way that it's going to happen if you okay with being mediocre, right? It goes on to say, ascendancy, the upper hand, victory in war or a contest, man. There's no way you're going to be able to win in this battle by being mediocre, man. By being content, by being complacent, by not striving to be the best individual that you can be for the Lord, man. There's no way that you'll be able to achieve that next level. You're going to, you're never going to ascend, man. You're going to stay, you know, right in the middle. And if you're in the middle of the pack, you're not going, you're not going to get the prize, man. You're not going to get one of the ribbons. Understand, they, in, in the world, they only have first, second, and third place ribbons, man. You don't want to be that individual that's only striving for a participation award, right? You're okay with being on the bench. You don't want to get out there in the field. You don't want to get out there on the court. You don't want to really get out there and, you know, give it your best, man. Give it your all, right? There's a saying in the world of sports, right? You know, play this down like it's your last down. Or play this game like it's your last game. That should be your mindset and the truth, man. Serve the Lord like it's your last day being able to serve the Lord. Because at the end of the day, that's the reality of the situation. Because we don't know when the Lord is going to come back, man. We don't know when Yahweh Shai is going to come and judge this earth, man. Right? It says, of that day and of that hour, no man knoweth, not even the Son, but the Father only. So you should be striving and serving the Lord like it's your last time being able to do so, man. Right? So with that being said, let's go into this. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 4. Right? Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 4. And it reads, But ye, I'm going to start at verse 3. Right? Deuteronomy 4 and 3. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor... The Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. So you see how the Lord put a difference between those that followed after Baal Peor and those that clave unto the Lord, meaning they were joined. They stuck unto the Lord to the very end. The Lord preserved them alive, man. It's talking about the generation that was able to inherit the promised land because the generation that came up out of Egypt, the generation that the Lord initially gave the law, statutes, and commandments to, they all died, man, except Joshua and except Caleb, right? But the younger generation, man, they clave unto the Lord. And that's what we need to be doing in order to obtain the mastery. Because if you're following other gods, if you're following the ways of the world, you kind of half step and you, you kind of want to serve the Lord, but you kind of want to do the things of the world, you're not going to make it, man. 
The Lord is not dealing with that. You cannot serve the world and you cannot serve God. You have to choose, right? And that's what this lesson is kind of going into, man. Let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 2. And we're going to uh, start at verse 4, right? It's the book of Sirach, chapter 2, and verse 4. And it reads, matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 3. It reads, Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. And we're at the end of days, man. We are in the last days. He said, if you want to be increased in your last end, you have to cleave unto the Lord. Right? Meaning what? In every single thing that you do, everything that you set your mind upon, you have to be thinking upon the Lord. That's why it says this in the book of Proverbs real quick. Let me get this precept. Let me get this real quick. The book of Proverbs chapter 3. Right? So I can bear with me. Proverbs chapter 3. And let's see where I want to start. I'm going to start a verse... Let's see. Let's start at verse five. Proverbs chapter three, verse five. It reads, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Man, that's what it means to cleave unto the Lord, acknowledging him in all your ways. Right. When you wake up, when you go to sleep throughout your day in a workplace. Right. Because you're going to face manifold temptation on a day to day basis, man. And if you're not acknowledging him in every single thing that you do, then you are liable to be given or taken rather in that temptation. So you have to acknowledge the most high so that you can be increased in the last days, man, in your last end. Right. So like, let me, let me get a precept real quick. I just thought about it. Right. Right. Let me get this real quick. Bear with me. In Ecclesiastes. Let me get this real quick in the book of Ecclesiastes. Salakia. Bear with me. I think it's Ecclesiastes 10. 9 and 10. Right, con. Let's get this real quick. Book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. It reads... Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest, man. He's saying, so whatever you do, do it with all your might. So when it comes to serving the Lord, make sure you're doing it with all your might. Because tomorrow is not promised, like I was saying before. That's why, again, it goes on to say, there is no knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, man. Because when you die... All you have is what you did, man. The Most High is going to judge you according to what you did in your time that you had on this earth, man. That's why it's so important to serve the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind right now while you have the time to do so. I mean, David, he said, look, I made no I made no uh, tarrying to turn to the Lord. He said, I'm, I made haste, rather. I delayed not. Understand? So we have to have that same mindset and pursuing after the Lord because our works are going to follow us to the grave, whether they're good or whether they're evil. And not everybody's going to die because in the last day when Yahweh Shai come back, he's going to judge every man according to his work, whether you're dead or whether you're alive. Right? He is the judge of the of the uh, dead and the quick, man, meaning the alive and the dead. Understand? But come. Let's go. Let's, let's move on. All right? Let's go to the book of Job. Right? Chapter 17. Right, it's the book of Job, chapter 17, and verse 9. Job, chapter 17, verse 9. I'm going to start at verse 8. It reads, Upright men shall be astonished at this, and the innocent shall stir up himself against the hypocrite. Right, so that's what we're seeing right now, man. The innocent are stirring themselves up against the hypocrite. That's why you see so much contention between, you know, the Hebrew Israelites and these various religions, man. These various man-made traditions, right? Because we are the innocent, man. We are the ones that are trying to walk after purity, walk after true righteousness and holiness via the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments, man. And then, you know, we're stirred up against these hypocrites who claim to love God, but yet 
in their actions, they deny him, man. Right, let's keep going. Verse 9. It says, the righteous also shall hold on his way. Right? It says, the righteous shall hold on his way. It says, uh, and he that hath clean hands shall be stronger and stronger, man. So let's go, let's go real quick to the blue letter Bible. Let's go to Job 17 and 9. And let's go to that word hold. I'm, I'm just curious, right? I don't know what to say. But I'm curious. It said, the righteous shall hold on his way. It's a, it's a Hebrew word, a cuss, right? It means grasp, take hold, seize, take possession, right? The actual definition means to handle, to lay, to lay hold, right? To come upon. So a synonym to all of those words would be what? Cleaving, being joined to, taking hold of, right? To be caught. Right. So we have to take hold of what the Lord and what he said. It said the righteous shall take hold. Right. It said the righteous shall also hold on his way. And he that had clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. So if you hold on your way in righteousness by cleaving unto the Lord and doing what he says, you're going to have clean hands. What makes your hands defiled? Sin. Right. That's what makes your hands defile, man, in the eyes of the Lord. Whenever you're using your hands, which is what you use to do work, whenever you're putting your hand forth to wickedness, man, that's going to make your hands unclean. But whenever you take hold unto your way in righteousness by cleaving unto the Lord, then you're, then you're going to become stronger and stronger in his truth. That's what it means to strive for the mastery. Are right? you wanting to be perfect in the eyes of the Lord? Is that not what our Lord commanded us, man? And let me get this, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 48. It says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Man, we have to strive for perfection. That's what it means to strive for the mastery. To be a master is perfection. You are an expert in your field, right? That's why in, in, in certain trades, you have people called, uh, oh, he's, he's a master plumber, right? He's a master electrician. He's a master um, technician or whatever your field or trade is, man, because you are an expert. You are a professional. You are perfect in your field, in your trade. That's what we have to be when it comes to this truth, man. That's how hard we have to strive for this truth. Every day you get up, man, and you go work for your oppressor, man. Why don't you have that same energy for the Lord? Right? You go to work and you bust your behind, right? Clocking in 40 plus hours every single week. And yet, you don't have 40 minutes for the Lord. Right? That's called mediocrity. Right? That's when it's to be average in the truth. You're okay because now you've been given the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you're an Israelite. And now you understand you have to keep the commandments. And yet, you're not utilizing what the Lord has given you. And it's going to waste, man. You're not taking advantage of what the Lord has blessed you with. And you just, you, you straight up and down, you're just wasting it, man. You're giving all your time, all your energy, all your effort, right? You're giving your soul over to your oppressor, man. And now you're remaining stagnant in the truth. You're not increasing, right? You, you're not you're not praying more than more than once a day. You're not reading more than a chapter a day, right? You only come to camp because you know you 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 understand that that's what has to happen. In order for you to obtain the kingdom, bro, if, if, if you're the most high has built you up and given you that understanding that you have to go out and teach, you have to be a make your body live and sacrifice. But it's not only about that, man. Right? Anybody can come out and stand on a block, bro. They do they do that in the world, man. Serving nicks and dimes, right? They'll stand on the block all day, right? Trying to trying to make bread, you understand? So it, it's not about you just coming out to the highways and byways. It's about trying to strive for the mastery, right? It's about not being stagnant. It's about being on fire for the Lord. That's what it's about. You really being sincere in this thing. Let me get the book of Titus real quick. All right, let me get this real quick. The book of Titus. Let's see what I want. Uh, I like this. I'm going to get this first, and then I'm going to get something else. All right, come on. It's the book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 9. It reads, 
holding fast. <laughs> and I didn't I didn't want to get the scripture, right? I didn't have to jot it down, but this is important and it needs to come out through the power and spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. It says, Titus 1 9, holding fast, like we've been talking about, cleaving, right? Holding onto his weight, staying to, sticking to, joining to, right? Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers, man. At the end of the day, you want to be built up to the point where you're able to defend what it is that you claim to believe in, man. Without a shadow of a doubt, you can go into what you believe in and, and, and debunk the gainsayers and the naysayers and exhort them, right? And then also convert sinners, man. Right? But I wanted to get this. Let's go to Titus 2 and 7. It reads, In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Right? So we have to have a pattern of good works. Right? In all things, man. Hey, you know, in the world, people have routines, right? And you're supposed to have a routine in the truth as well. To the best of your ability, it's hard sometimes in captivity, right? But, you know, people, they'll wake up 4 a.m., they'll, 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 they'll go to the gym, right? They'll go to work, they'll get off, they'll, they'll do X, Y, and Z, their little hobby or whatever, man. Look, they have a pattern, and they're sticking to that routine. You also have to have a pattern of good works, meaning, hey, little by little, man, you're continuously doing better in this truth. You're continuously killing off the old man, right? You're striving for the mastery. You're putting off the old things and you're putting on the new things in the Lord, right? That's that pattern of good works that you want to be showing and representing, not only in your actions, but also in your speech. Again, it goes on to say, showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness. So you want to be mastering the doctrine mastering these these teachings man right you want to increase in the knowledge of the lord what is what does it mean to what, what's doctrine mean it literally just means teaching so you want to be learning this doctrine and what is the doctrine let's go to it. right what is the doctrine this is the book of proverbs chapter 4 verse 2 proverbs chapter 4 verse 2 it says for i give you good doctrine good teaching forsake ye not my law do not forsake the lord's law because that is the good doctrine that is the good teaching that you are supposed to create a pattern of good works within man so that you can show uncorruptness in your doctrine pursuant to titus chapter 2 and verse 7 but it goes on to say in doctrine showing uncorruptness gravity sincerity because at the end of the day, you want to be able to level with your people as well. You want to be able to come to their level, right? A lot of our people, they come from various different backgrounds, man. All different walks of life, in the truth and without the truth, man. We experience things very differently in some things, but at the same time, you know, also experiencing the same things. So you have to be able to meet our people where they are. That's why in the book of Ezekiel, the Lord told him, uh, to, to make your forehead hard as flint, man. Meaning, if, they, if they're hard-headed, man, look, you got to be able to combat that, right? Let me get this in Jude real quick. I don't want to get too far off the topic, but it's just necessary through the Spirit. This book of Jude, in verse, uh, let's start at verse 20, right? Con, Jude, uh, Jude 20. It says, but ye, beloved, Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Is that not what we've been talking about this whole time? Right? It says, building up yourselves. That's what you should be doing. That's what it means to try and strive for the mastery. You're building up yourself, man. Right? The, hey, if you're a body built or if you, if you, uh, you know, striving to, to obtain this peak physique, you have to go to the gym. Right? You can't expect to be this toned, you know, uh, uh, big buff dude if you never go into the gym and all you're doing is eating damn junk food, man. Right? That same thing applies into the truth, man. 
you have to work for. You have to build yourself up in the spirit, though. And what is the spirit, man? These the, the scriptures. Yahweh Shai, he said, look, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He goes on to say, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Right, so some brothers and sisters, man, you're going to have to save with fear, man. You have to let them know about the, the terrible judgment that's coming upon the earth. You have to let them know about how, how it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That's saving others with fear. But the Lord also said save some save with compassion, right? Meaning you you just breaking down the milk to them, they're, they're, they're receiving it humbly, you understand? You're just letting them know who we are, their curses, and, and, and how we've been discontinued and cut off from our heritage, the promise and the blessing that the Lord has uh, uh, in store for us, right? That's what it means, uh, uh, you know, the doctrine and teaching it with sincerity and gravity, right? The kind. Let's go back to Titus real quick and finish that. Right, Titus chapter 2 and verse uh, 8, it says, Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you, man. Right, so the last thing you want is for somebody to be able to be able to come up to you that is of the contrary part, meaning of the world, of Christianity, of damn Islam, of Hinduism, of anything that is of a contrary part, anything that is a contrary to sound doctrine, which is the law, you do not want him to be able to come up and confound you, man. Come up and put you on blast. Expose you. you understand? That's what's going to happen. You will be exposed if you are not striving for the mastery, if you are content with the little knowledge that you have because it tells you, right? Let's get this. I believe it's in the book of Hebrews, right? I believe it's in the book of Hebrews. Let's see where I want, man. Let's see where I want. Let's see where I want. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12, right? Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. It reads, is that what I want? Let's see. I kind of think it's what I want. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. It reads, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have one, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Right. So you hey, some brothers, they got to be retaught. Some brothers, they got to be exhorted to be able to go harder for the truth so that they can be able to equip themselves with the meat, right? They're able to now move and transition from only drinking the milk, only, you know what I'm saying, eating a little bit of honey here and there, because now they're able to digest the meat. And now they're not only able to digest this food, but they're cooking it, man. Understand, they're putting the plates together and they're feeding the people, they're feeding the sheep. All right, but that's, that's really not what I wanted. But understand that a lot of times, brothers, they neglect the milk. And that's why they're not growing in the truth, man. Because, again, what is the milk? The oracles of God, man. Right? Hey, and what is the oracles of God? Let's get that real quick. Let's get that real quick in the book of... Uh, let's see where it's at. I think it's the book of Sirach. Sirach, chapter 3. Thirty-one. We're gonna get it. Slack it. Bear with me. I'm not. I'm not the most astute, you know, with the with the precepts. But I know where it's at. Let me. Let me get it real quick. Let me get it real quick. What are, What are the oracles of God, man? This is the book of Sirach, chapter thirty-three. That's where I was looking. Thirty-three and three. Come. 
So right chapter 33 and verse 3, I'm going to start at verse 2. It reads, A wise man hateth not the law, but he that is a hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. Mm. A man of understanding trusteth in the law. It says a man of understanding trusteth in the law. And the law is faithful unto him as an oracle, man. So, hey, the first principles of God, which are the oracles, that's talking about the law, man. And the, and the law is faithful unto a man as an oracle, man. Meaning you can go into the law and the Lord is going to be able to show you exactly what you need to do, man. It's straight up and down. And that's a lot of, a lot of times that's what our people need. And that's really what our people be neglecting. And that's why they're not growing because you will never be able to grow as a babe into you know a man that, that that is able to digest the meat if you neglect the milk right you're not gonna give a baby you know meat straight up man or, or or just uh straight out the womb it don't work like that man right but nevertheless let's get back to it all right let's get back to it come on let's get this in the book of second samuel all right second samuel chapter three Huh. Right. It's a lot here. Second Samuel chapter three. We're gonna start at verse sixteen. All right. Second Samuel chapter three. So like it's getting a little windy out here. All right. Get these pages sticking. Right. Come on, it's Second Samuel chapter 3 and verse 16. And it reads, matter of fact, I'm gonna start at verse 1. It's a lot here. Second Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. It reads, Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. Right? So what we gotta understand is that Saul was the Lord's anointed. The Lord chose Saul to be the first king to preside over the nation of Israel, man, right? The Lord chose Saul, man. He chose him out of everybody to put his anointing on, right? He chose him to lead the people, understand? It says, there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. Mm. But David waxed stronger and stronger and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker, right? So David, on the other hand, man, David was the, the, the successor, right? The successor of Saul, man. I mean, meaning, hey, the Lord, he removed the kingship from Saul and he gave it to David. Now, why did he do that? Because Saul chose to go down the path of rebellion, trying to do his own thing, trying to serve the Lord however he felt like serving him, man. He was given wicked sacrifices. He went and sought counsel from a, a soothsayer, a witch, understand? Right. He was disobedient and not and not, you know, slaying all of the Amalekites. He chose rebellion. And the Lord said in the book of uh, first Samuel 15, that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Let's get that. Real quick. First Samuel chapter 15 and verse uh, 22, it reads. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than the sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Because Saul, he went and he killed a lot of these Amalekites, but he didn't kill them all. And the Lord said, Kill man, woman, child, and all of the beasts, man. But what did the people do, man? They took the beasts, the best of the beasts, and they tried to sacrifice them unto the Lord. They took the king, Agag, alive, right? The Lord told him to kill them all. But he thought that it was going to be okay in the sight of the Lord because they brought the best of the flocks, man. They brought the best of the, of the herds, the best of the oxen, and they were trying to sacrifice it unto the Lord. They brought the king before the Lord, understand? But the Lord told him to kill them all, straight up and down. So he went about trying to do his own thing, and the Lord said that that was wicked in his eyes, man. Because, look, he would rather you obey him and just do what he told you to do than to give him all of these sacrifices, man. A lot of our people, they think, oh, I'm going to go into the church and I'm going to give, you know, $100 to the pastor today, man. The Lord not, he, he don't want that, man. He wants you to obey him, right? 
I'm going to go to verse 23. It says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness. Let's go into that word stubbornness, man. Right? Because it says, And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. So because Saul rejected God's word because he went to go do his own thing, the Lord rejected him from being a king, man. But understand, he was the Lord's anointed. And you so-called black Hispanic Native Indians that came into the truth and knowledge that you're an Israelite, the Lord chose you out of the world too, man. But the same way that he anointed you with that understanding in the Holy Spirit, he can take it away from you just like he did from King Saul, man. Let's go into that word for stubbornness. I'm just curious. All right, 1 Samuel 15. Bear with me. Let's get it. 1 Samuel 15 and 23. All right. Stubbornness. It says, insolent, or yeah, to be insolent, display pushing arrogance, presumption, right? Stun or dull. That's the actual definition. It means stun or dull. All right, let's go into the definition of that word dull, right? Let's get that real quick. Dull definition. I'm just curious, right? This go, I, I believe this goes into being mediocre, all right? What does it mean to be dull? Lacking interest or excitement. Mm. Lacking brightness. Mm. You see that? Make or become dull or less intense. It says decrease, diminish, reduce, dampen, depress, deaden, ease. Understand? So being stubborn is also equivalent with being, you know, uh, a dull, which means to pretty much reduce or decrease, bro, the lesson, man, when you should be trying to increase in these last days. So you would be stubborn, according to the Lord, if you're not trying to increase, man. If you're trying to stay stagnant and be at the same level that you were in when you first came into the truth, man. There's no way that you've been in the truth for five years and you and you you at the same level, man, of understanding. All right? You're not growing in the truth, bro. You're not growing in the spirit. All right. You can't even break down Genesis 25, man. Jacob and Esau. All right? You can't break down Romans chapter 9. Right? You like these are things that you must know, man. If you are going to be out on the highways and byways, right? And these are things that you must know that's going to increase and build up your faith and solidify uh, um the doctrine and the belief, your faith in this thing, man, it's going to help you in this thing, bro. You increase and you trying to learn more, right? You just pray more, you fast more, you read more. If you do these things, the Lord will give you an increase. If you cleave unto him, he said you're going to be increased in your last end. So if you're not growing in this truth, if you stay staying stagnant or mediocre, or ordinary, you're just middle of the pack. You just know you're an Israelite, right? That's not enough, man. You should be trying to double and multiply the talents and the gifts that the Most High has given you through the Holy Spirit. Right? Pecan. So Saul, man, he had his kingship, his throne, his crown taken from him, man. The Lord visited him and he took his crown, man. And he gave it to David. But what did David do? Let's go to Psalms. Right? What did David do? This is the book of Psalm. Chapter 68, and let's see where I want to start. Psalm 68, I mean 63, Salakia. Salakia. 63 and 8. I believe that's what I wanted. Come on. Psalm chapter 63 and verse 8, it reads, My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me, man. Hey. He said his soul followeth hard after thee, man. In the little in the little side notes in my Bible, right? That word hard, because he said, My soul followeth hard after thee, it literally means close behind thee, man. So David, he was always close behind the Lord. His soul followed hard after the Lord. And the Lord gave him an increase, man. The Lord exalted him to be the king of Israel, man. And, the, and literally the most notable king of Israel outside of our Lord Hamashiach El Shai, man. Right? Understand that King David, his heart was perfect with the Lord. Even though he fell, 
even though he slipped, even though he went off, he sinned, a sin worthy unto death. The Lord said still that his heart was perfect with him, man, because his soul followed hard after the Lord and it did not depart away, man. Whenever he sinned against the Lord, he was remorseful, man. He was of a broken and a contrite spirit, right? But did he take his foot off the gas? No, he didn't, man. Let's get this in the book of Psalms. Again, 119. Let's see where I'm going to start. Because, hey, Psalm 119 is probably the most mighty chapter in the Bible, bro. I'm not going to lie, right? It's the longest chapter in the Bible. And all it's talking about is how David wants to keep the commandments of God. How, how important it is to keep the commandments of God, to keep the laws of God. And yet you have the Christian church come in and tell our people we don't got to keep the laws of God whenever the longest chapter in the Bible is literally all about doing the Lord's commandments, right? Watch this. I'm going to just start a verse. Uh, I'm going to start a one, right? Psalm 119, one. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. That's what we have to do in these last days, man. We have to be seeking the Lord with our whole heart and walking in the Lord. And then it, it, it said, man, at the very beginning, it said, blessed are the undefiled in the way. And if you hold on to your way, the Lord said, you're going to have clean hands, man. And you're going to become stronger and stronger. Verse three, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Right. These are the things that David was meditating upon, man, that David was thinking about. Right. Let me let me get let me get one more in this chapter, though. Let me see. Let me see. Watch this. Let's see. Come on. Come on. Let's start a verse. Uh. 35 it says make me to go in the path of thy commandments for therein do i delight incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness man right so look david he had a heart and a mind ready to serve the lord his soul followed hard after the lord we need to have that same exact mindset i'm not gonna get too many too many more precepts man but we're getting ready to close it down all right, let's get this in the book of First Corinthians. All right, First Corinthians chapter nine and verse twenty-four. It reads, "Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things." And again, I got these little notes right. It's a, uh, a, what it means to be temperate is, is literally just to be having self-control, man, right? It's temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible, right? Because these athletes, right? These entertainers, they perform and they do what they do regarding their sport in order to receive a prize, man. Whether it's a championship ring, right? Whether it's a championship belt, whether it's a damn Emmy or Grammy, right? They are, are performing and doing all of this work. They're running, for lack of better words, training, you know, they're doing that for a corruptible crown. Meaning that's not going to do anything for you, man, at the end of the day. It's vanity, right? It's vanity. What's that truly going to do for you? It's going to sit on a shelf. It's going to sit in a little case, right? And it's, it's, it's just going to sit there, man. But we are doing it for an incorruptible crown because our crown it, it, it is conducive to life it's conducive to rulership it's conducive to dominion and becoming a master man right it goes on to say i therefore so run not as uncertainly not as uncertainly man you have to be certain in this truth that it is the truth and once you really believe in it that it is the truth you're gonna go hard for it man right i therefore so run not as uncertainly so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway, All right? So you don't want to become a hypocrite in this thing, man. You don't want to be complacent. And this goes for brothers who've been in the truth 
for a long time as well, right? But they're not wanting to continue to increase, man. And then the Lord, he starts diminishing you, starts taking that spirit away little by little. Your light starts getting dimmer and dimmer when it used to be, a, you know, this grandiose fire, man. You used to be on fire for the Lord. And then you stop going hard and now the Lord is starting to take away that spirit little by little. Next thing you know, you're still out there teaching, but behind closed doors, man, you're going the hell off, man. Right? That can happen if you don't bring your body in subjection and if you don't strive for the mastery. If you take your foot off the gas, man, and you start jerking back, you was in the front, right? You was way ahead of everybody else, man. And now you're almost dead last, right? Let's get this in the book of uh, 2 Peter, right? 2 Peter 1. Real quick, 2 Peter chapter 1. In verse, in verse uh, 19, I'll get to the point. It says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, where unto ye do well that ye take heed as a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, man. So we're going to be doing well if we take heed to these words, man, and apply them to our everyday life, man, because we're in a dark place right now, man. We're in Babylon the Great, the land of confusion, the land full of darkness as darkness itself, man. And we were given the light through Yahweh Shai because he is the light of man to be able to shine unto this dark and crooked and perverse nation, man. But if we're not taking heed to the prophecies, unto the things that the Lord commanded us, then our light will become dim. When we're really supposed to be growing, our light is supposed to be shining more and more as the day dawn, Right? When, and that, that's talking about when your house side comes back, man. All right, let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, and it reads, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why did the Lord do that? It tells you, for verse 12, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the Lord, he gave people, brothers, and he gave brothers in particular to go out and to be evangelists, to be prophets, to be teachers, apostles, pastors, right? So that we could bring our people into the truth through the work, man, through the laboring. But these are all skills that if it, there's a saying in the world, man, if you do not use it, you will lose it, man, right? As a teacher, you're supposed to be constantly learning so that you can constantly teach. As an apostle, you're supposed to constantly go out. That's what it means to be an apostle, be sent out. If you're not continuously going out, then you're going to, hey, you're going to be lackadaisical. I mean, you're not going to want to keep doing it as fervent as you were once doing it. Right? So keep your foot on the gas. Verse 13, it says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Hamashiach, man. We all want to measure up and be that perfect man of Hamashiach, man. In the day of judgment, when the Lord looks upon, you know, the sheep and the goats, and he says to the good and faithful servant, well done, right? And unto the wicked, hey, hey, I never knew you, you wicked and, and slothful servant, man. Right? So these are things that we have to consider, man. I'm going to get a few more and I'm going to close out. Right? Proverbs chapter 18. Let me get this real quick. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 9. It reads, He also that is slothful in his work is a brother to him that is a great waster, man. So if you slothful in your work, man, the Lord said you're a brother to them that are great wasters, man. What is a great waster? Imagine you have a buffet, right? Imagine you have a buffet, you, these restaurants that do buffets or whatever. What do they do with all that food at the end? Do they go out? Do they feed the homeless, right? Do they give it to the people that are in need? No, they throw it away. Same with any restaurant, man. The food that is not eaten at the end of the night, they throw it away. That's an example of a great waster. Or, you know, people who are picky eaters, you know, children, you, you see how much food children waste, you know what I'm saying? But the Lord is likening great wasters unto the slothful, man. Those that are slothful in the work. So if you're slothful in the Lord's work, hey, man, you are a great waster because you're really wasting 
the precious gift that the Most High has blessed you with. Because again, it's not given to everybody, man. Not everybody was given the chance. I'm going to say it like that. Not everybody was even given the chance to really, you know, repent. That's why in the book of Matthew, man, uh, uh, chapter 13, he said, lest their eyes should see and their ears should hear and they repent. Because it's impossible for them to repent because it was never given to them to repent in the first place. But if you came into the knowledge of the truth and you came into repentance, man, hey, that is a gift of the Lord. And you are a great waster if you're not taking advantage of that gift. And you just, you say the hell with it, man. I'm okay. I know I'm an Israelite now. Now I'm keeping the Sabbath day, you know, and that's it, man. No, you have to be adding on to that gift and spreading it and, and, and giving it to others as well, right? Come on, let me get, let me get, let me get a couple more. All right. Let's go to the book of Romans. All right. Romans chapter 12 and we can start at verse 10 Romans chapter 12 verse 10 it reads be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another not slothful in business fervent in spirit serving the Lord man so you're actually not only serving the Lord whenever you you being diligent in your work but you're actually showing and demonstrating love to your people man All right you're being kind and showing them true love, man. Because at the end of the day, the more that we work for the Lord, the closer we are to getting out of here, man. Because at the end of the day, that's what this thing is all about. Us getting the hell up out of captivity. Us uh, uh, overcoming this this damn oppression, man. And getting the victory through our Lord Hamashiach Yawashah. That's what this thing is about. This thing is about overcoming, man. Right? But I'm going I'm to get two more precepts. I'm going to close out there. All right. This is the book of uh, 1 Kings, chapter 18, and verse 21. It reads, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord Yahweh be God, follow him. But if but all, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. So you have to make that conscious decision, man. Like, do you really believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai like you say you do? Because at the end of the day, the Lord is a God of knowledge and, and by him actions are weighed. So he's going to judge every man according to his works, man. All right? He's coming to see how much work you were really putting in for him in his name and his son, man, and, and his people. Right? If you believe that Baal is God, man, you know, that you like the things of the world, you love this world, you like partaking in the things of the world, hey, just stay in the fuck, Shalaki. Just stay in the world, man. Right? Just stay in the world. Because, hey, the Lord feel the same way, man. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 3, and I'm starting verse 15, right? I know thy works. Hey, the Lord know your works, man. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So because then, be, so, like you, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, man. So you got to pick a side in these things, in this last days, man. You got to pick a side. Right? Either go, you're going to serve the Lord or you're going to serve Baal in this world. Right? You know, I'm going to get one scripture. I'm going I'm to close out with this. Right? This is Joshua chapter 24, and I'm going to start at verse 14. Joshua 24 and 14. Now, therefore, fear Yahweh and serve him in sincerity and in truth, man. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. So we have to be, you, you really got to be sincere in this thing, man. You really have to be sincere because the Lord, he tried the reins, man. He knows your heart. He knows if you really, really invested in him or if you really invested in this world. If you really love him or if you really love this world, man. The Lord know you, man. Right? He know all your secret things and he going to search out all your secret things in these last days, man. So make sure that you're serving the Lord in sincerity and the truth with all your heart, soul, and mind, man. Go in as hard for the Lord as you can. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be things in the way. But at the end of the day, take advantage of the time that the Most High gives you, bro. And Akim and Akwat, family. Verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, man. If it's evil to you to come out, you know, to do the work of the Lord, 
if it's evil to you to pray to the Lord, to read, to you know what I'm saying, then hey, just choose 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 what you want to do, man. If you want to stay in the world, you want to stay in captivity in Babylon the Great, then just just stay in the world, man. But if you want to serve the Lord, if you want to be a master, right, a ruler, if you want to obtain the victory, right, then serve your Yahweh, right. I'm gonna skip down. It says, but as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh, right. Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. With that, I'm gonna say, Kwam Yahshalla, a Barakata, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. The Lord willing, this video was edifying to at least one soul. That is say, Shalom.